All right, Ben was just talking about restrictions and changes. Some of those restrictions and changes have affected our immigration uh, targets. You know, it's been a while since we've talked about immigration. So here's a reminder. Our goal was to accept around 1% of Canada's population. So before the pandemic, Canada was welcoming an average of 25 to 30,000 new immigrants per month. In October 2020, that number was just 15,000, less than half the intake from the year before. So what will things look like in 2021? Joining us this morning is immigration lawyer Chantal Deloge. Thanks for being back with us. Thank you. Uh, let's start with some of the targets that were set out. So 400,000 was the target that was set for this coming year. That's higher than what we've actually seen before. In fact, we haven't seen a number that high since around the First World War, since 1913. So given the state of the pandemic, all of the restrictions happening globally, do you think it's possible to hit that target? Yeah, I think the government is going to have a very difficult time to meet those targets this coming year. Uh, last year, the targets were not even close to being met. And on the ground, we're not seeing anything speeding up in terms of application processing. So it's one thing to set a target and say we're welcoming a certain number of newcomers in a year, but officers actually have to process those cases. And with a lot of embassies being practically closed all over the world, I think it's going to be really hard to meet that target. Yeah, we should mention here as well that we did reach out to Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada for a response on those targets, and we did not hear back from them. Uh, moving on to how the government has tried to speed up some of this process, we've seen automation be introduced by companies right across the country. Immigration is no different. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's about time. Tell us about the new portal for those uh, trying to renew their permanent residency. Yes, yeah, so a lot of things are shifting online with immigration. Um, the, a lot of the applications that you used to have to send on paper now, um, you know, can be done electronically and you can set up an account inside in, on the internet in this portal. You can link applications to your portal and you can get your messages a little bit faster that way. You also avoid the dangers of, uh, you know, not receiving a letter that is mailed or not receiving an email which may go missing, etc. So those are all good things, uh, but I think it, it's, it's important to understand that immigration is pretty limited in terms of its technology. It really, really does need a technology upgrade, and I think it's holding it back in terms of what they're able to do. Uh, when, what you're hearing from your clients, are they happy about this change to more automation? Yeah, for the most part, they are, although there is a significant portion of clients that are not tech savvy. You have sometimes uh, people sponsoring their parents and their parents may be elderly, or you may have people from countries where their IT infrastructure is not very good. They don't have constant access to computers. So we always have to keep in mind that there are people like that too. But for the most part, people who are immigrating to Canada are very happy using electronic means uh, for completing their applications. And given the fact that it is so much faster, uh, people are pretty happy about that. We were talking about the effect of the pandemic on immigration. Let's talk about the effect of politics. The prime minister signaling there could possibly be an election in 2021. How could the outcome of that change immigration? Well, I certainly think that you won't see the effects of that for some time, even if the government does happen to change to a different party that has different priorities and may, for example, favor more economic immigrants compared to sponsoring your parents or something like that. You're not going to see those changes come into effect for several years. Uh, but I think what, what you would see is a difference, um, you know, on the way the border is treated. I think you would see differences in refugee policy. Um, but again, that remains to be seen. As far as I know, there's not even been a platform released uh, um, you know, for, for that kind of thing. So, um, you know, certainly there would be differences in the way that immigration is viewed, but I don't think you're going to see the overall targets and numbers change. Uh, one last question on that. There are people in this country, as we look ahead to the next two years, recovering economically, who are wondering, can we sustain economically within Canada, bringing in an increased amount of immigrants? What's your response to that? I think it's important for people not to have a knee-jerk reaction to what is a temporary situation. Keep in mind that the number of immigrants that are applying now are not actually going to arrive in Canada for over a year. And by the time they would start looking for employment and that kind of thing settling down, you're looking at a couple of years down the road. Um, Immigration and the government really have to play a long game when it comes to this kind of thing, because you're looking at the demographic effects over, over the next generation, not only what's happening right now. So, you, you know, in the same way that you can't turn a boat around immediately, uh, you have to make incremental change in immigration numbers as well. Chantelle Deloge, it's an important story in this country, but one we haven't had a chance to look at a lot since the pandemic. I'm glad you brought us up to speed. Thanks so much.
Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.